All right, so you got your Kaizen kit and you're ready to attach it to the wall. Your base should have come with screws, drywall anchors, and spacers, as well as some sandpaper. And you are also going to need a level, a screwdriver with a nice proper size Phillips head, number two bit, and a pencil. One of the first things you're going to want to do is figure out which holes you're going to use on the base and mark those holes with a pencil so that you make sure to mark the correct spots on the wall. I like to use the topmost and bottommost holes so that it's most stable. And you want to pick the holes that are above the slots so that the bracket can still slot in and slide down the slot. If you put a screw in a hole that's below a slot, you're not going to be able to put a bracket into that slot to hold any of your mounts. So I've marked these two and these two. And now I've got to pick the spot on the wall. So once you've decided generally where your rack's going to go, you want to pick a good height. Now, if you're going to be mounting a power bin or anything on here, you're going to want to be able to see into that bin. So you want something that's below eye level. But with props hanging down and maybe a down low bin or something mounted underneath, you are going to want as much space as you can under, underneath your rack, or maybe for furniture or something else to go down there. So you generally want to mount it just a little bit below your eye level, whatever is comfortable for you or anyone else who might be using the rack. So I'm going to mount it about here because I'm pretty tall and I want other people to be able to see in there. And the next thing I'm going to want is my level. So I picked a spot, picked a height, and now I'm going to make sure that it is level. Now you could eyeball this. Um, now that I've got it level, I'm holding it very firmly on the wall so it doesn't shift at all. And you could eyeball the level and get it pretty good. You just want to be careful because especially if you extend out to the sides with maybe some deep forks on the sides, and it's not really level, you're going to start to really notice that and your rack's going to look a little wonky. So. So I just made a little dot in the center of each of the holes that I'm going to be putting a screw in. And make sure I can see those dots on my wall. And the next step is going to be, almost the next step, is going to be inserting the drywall anchors. But first you want to figure out if there's any studs underneath where you're putting your screws. Or for that matter, if you're in reinforced drywall, there's actually uh, plywood underneath. Um, you can just put a screw directly in it and you're not going to need the drywall anchor. And when you're putting the drywall anchor, you'll find that it's just bottoming out and not going in all the way. Obviously, if you're mounting it to concrete or brick or something else, you're going to need the appropriate hardware for that. But we are doing it into sheetrock. So I've marked the spot where I want to put my screws. Um, first, I want to figure out, do I need a sheetrock anchor or can I just screw straight into a solid material behind the wall? If you knock on the wall, you'll probably be able to hear if it's kind of a hollow sounding, just sheetrock wall, or if it feels very solid. There might be a layer of sheer wall or, or plywood right behind that sheetrock, especially if it's the exterior wall of an apartment building. Um, the other thing you might be able to hear right away is where your studs are. Otherwise, you can use a stud finder or a magnet. My favorite stud finder actually is just some strong magnets in a little yellow fancy box. Uh, I'm going to use this club cap, magnetic club cap, as a stud finder. And the way that that works is by looking for screws in the wall where the sheetrock is screwed into the studs. So here I found a screw. If I go straight up and down to find more screws, so I know that there's a stud there. I've got my marks over here. I'm not finding any studs there. Oh, there's that one. There it is. There's the next stud. Studs are usually 16 inches apart. So that's perfect. I'm right between the studs. I'm not going to hit them with my drywall anchors. So I know that I'm going to need drywall anchors and that I can just put them right into the wall here. So we've included some self-drilling plastic drywall anchors. These things work great, pop open once they're in the wall and make a very strong connection. Uh, and you don't need a drill or any other tools, you just need a screwdriver. Make sure it's a screwdriver that fits really well. If your screwdriver is too small, 
you can end up just stripping out the plastic in the anchor and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to push this straight in where I made a mark. It's kind of a sharp tip that starts it out. And then pushing and turning, I'm basically drilling into the wall. So that one did not go very smoothly for me, and I'm kind of glad I did, it didn't because it's a good example of what might happen to you. I found as I was screwing that in, as it was getting ready to kind of punch through the other side, it was kind of shifting around a little bit, kind of stripping out the sheetrock a little, and I found that I had to push really hard, put a lot of force into the wall to get it to actually screw in all the way. It was a pretty decent amount of work, like I'm, I can feel it in my hand. Obviously, if you have a screw gun, an electric uh, drill or something with a screwdriver tip in it, that's going to make this a lot easier, but be careful not to overdo it. You're going to want to go really slow, start out really gentle, um, otherwise you'd be able to just plow that thing into the wall and it'll probably mess it up. The tip broke. I'm not sure why. I'm just actually going to use my screwdriver to kind of pre-drill the hole because just the very tip of this broke off. Let me see here. All right, we're ready to screw this thing into the wall. So get your spacers, get the one spacer to start with and put your screw into one of the top two holes and put your spacer on the screw. Get your screwdriver in place. And start screwing that in. Don't go all the way, because you need to get your hand back there to put the other spacers in place. So I'm gonna grab my next, and put it on the screw there. That ready, find that hole. Now that all four spacers are in place, I can tighten all the screws one at a time. So I noticed that probably while I was screwing in that wall anchor, the, hole se the anchor seemed to have shifted slightly. So my holes for the top two are actually too close together and it's getting like stuck, which is fine. Um, it just means I need to get the base seated against the wall before I finish putting the screws in all the way. Otherwise it gets really tight and hard to shift back there. So now I've got the base nice and flush against the wall, and I can finish screwing it in. So once I've got all the screws nice and snug, I'm going to want to go through and just tighten them up a little bit more, get them to kind of countersink into the wood a little bit and be relatively flush. Just a little bit, you don't want to go too far. I noticed over here it actually caused the wood to kind of crack away and pull up a little bit right above the tab, or right above the slot. So you want to be careful of that and not get them too far in there. You just want it to be nice and tight to the point where as you put weight on this thing and it shifts and swells and 
and it shrinks with uh, humidity over time that doesn't end up getting loose. So nice and tight. And that thing's solid.